Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Keaton County. We are in some leased equipment here. Uh, actually the dealership has loaned us this set. Um, not because of the manufacturer or anything like that because if John Deere were to loan us a set this would probably be a John Deere tractor not a fence. Uh, both are new to our dealership right now. So they had this set. I think they said they have another set very similar that they have floating out there somewhere. But right now we've been given the opportunity to use this because we actually don't have a cedar. We just have a planter. And uh, we're going to be playing our three fields. Currently have... Hmm, that's a spot I may have to fix later on. I do have a uh, tractor in the field over here plowing. I have one over in the other field next to the highway that is cultivating that. But we actually don't need the cultivator because this actually, from what I've been told, allows us to direct dr drill into the ground. Um, let's see here. We are going to actually do canola. We're in the very early morning hours of September 5th, the last day of the month, because we are running five day months. Let's get our lights on. There we go, we have it set to canola now. So as far as the uh, olive, uh, cutting down the olive uh, branches. Um, give me one second here. Let's get the course play set up for this guy. All right, now we got course play set up. Um, we can talk a little bit easier. So as far as the uh, olive uh, vineyard thing that we got going on, I have not cut that down yet, or at least reduced it significantly. So we are still having quite a bit of uh, issues as far as... I, uh, visual quality look in that direction the reason why I haven't done it yet is because in October that is the time frame for us to actually harvest I have it planted I have it growing I'm going to take advantage of that harvest and then we will remove what we can to make it work it in our favor so yeah Speaking of which, let's kind of move away from looking that way. So I haven't really used Fent products that much. You know, very rarely. But this is the Black Beauty Edition, and it definitely is a beauty. I think the weight they gave us might be a little heavy on the front, but maybe if uh, this was a uh, three-point attachment type of setup for our uh, cedar then it might have been worthwhile but I may have to talk to them about that and let them know that e the weight may not have been necessary for this setup you'd think they would have known that or realized that but it is what it is well bless you dog you just had a big sneeze didn't you <laughs> but yeah, this is one of our new uh, plots of land that we significantly increased the spacing of. I have a feeling I'm about to come through up here and kind of clean things up a little bit. Just judging by how much we missed there. But that's kind of going to be our day today because we have the time frame. So I'm going to plant one field canola, one barley, and come October 1st, one wheat. And basically the biggest reason is for wheat and barley, I can harvest those in June, I hope, and uh, be able to plant soybeans right into that. Um, as far as canola, the uh, reason for that is money. Because at least this time of year, it's around 118, 119, 120 bucks per bushel. 
I'm assuming that's per bushel. But yeah, that's that's quite a bit of money. <laughs> so compared to oats, which is under a hundred bucks, barley, which is under sixty bucks, wheat, right around sixty bucks. Yeah, but yet farm buying station you can buy it for one hundred and fifty. That does that, That's quite a bit of profit for that farm buying station. <laughs> But, yeah. So that's kind of the reason for that. And then, obviously, next spring... I uh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, we'll, next spring, we will be able to hopefully get some of our other fields. Um, that's soil composition. I don't need that. I want that. So we still have... Uh, let's see here. Two... Three fields of corn that we're gonna that we need to harvest at some point. It's still growing. So 124 would be the first, and then 123 and 136 look to be all about the same. But then we still have 125, 122, and 86, which they look like they might all populate about the same time. And those should be soybeans. Reg They're not regular soybeans. They must be narrow soybeans. Yes, they are. Interesting. Yeah, so that's what we're looking at right now. So once we get all of that taken care of, um... That might throw a wrench in it. Yeah, we're in the time frame for narrow, narrow soybeans. What I might do is... Hmm. I was thinking of doing rye, but the harvest is only in July. I think I might just throw alfalfa in all these fields. Uh, all the corn, soybeans, and whatnot. Hmm. I'll either be alfalfa or oil seed radish. Alfalfa I can always harvest and bail up and sell that. Oil seed radish is basically like you till it back in to get nutrients back into the ground. So that's not a bad thing by any means. But it's definitely something to think about. Uh, yeah. I either do that and help save on. Um, fertilizer or I go the other direction and spend the money to make bales I think I have all the right equipment already if not I might have to lease some hmm choices choices yeah okay, I kind of am wanting to go through these three new fields. What do you want, dog? Stop getting that stuck in weird places. Sorry. Usually he's pretty good when I'm recording, but for some reason he's on one. <laughs> he's got one of his stuffed animals that he's just attacking nonstop. Anyway, where was I before I was so rudely interrupted? dog <laughs> um yeah i legit forgot where i was at i'm sorry yeah not gonna lie that this fence just looks beautiful this blacked out fence yeah apparently my dog thinks so too And usually I'm like, I prefer John Deere and John Deere type of deal, just because I like the green. But this cedar is something else. I like this air cedar. It goes along with the case, uh, what is that? Let me look it up here. Ah, case fast riser 6127. Hmm. 
that can do narrow soybeans if I'm reading this right. Um, and that one can see directly too. I think after I do this first round of plowing, like I tend to do with most of mine, keep in mind this is a reworked version that I've had to do because it crashed and I lost the save game and I've had to come back in and rebuild everything type of deal. So if it's been a hot second since you've watched one of my videos, and the last one was here and we had things going a little different direction, I do apologize. Um, don't mean to confuse you guys. I, I get confused enough as it is with my own videos, much less everyone else's that I tend to watch. So... Yes, I don't know how what you guys what your guys' opinions are on air seeders like this, because it is an air seeder. If you listen closely, you can kind of hear like the air seeder uh, running back there. I know it's very quiet, which surprises me because I know, I think the case one I haven't ran the case one that I have. I have ran some of the other ones, and those are noisy. As far as the actual planters, not like this, not the cedar versions. But yeah, I think uh, what we're going to do is, after we do the initial planting for everything, or initial plowing, because, like I mentioned, uh, I tend to do, especially when I open fields like this, because... Where we're at is where the original part of the field was. It was very small compared to the way to the size we have it now. Um, I tend to go through any new fields that I have or expanded fields and I tend to plow them up, kind of like what I'm doing with this field behind us now. And that lag is not your computer or phone or whatever. Trust me, it's my video. Um, and that's because I'm pretty, and I'm 100% certain it's the olive orchard that I have. I just need to make it smaller and hopefully it'll make it better. Um, but again, harvest is just around the corner for me to do that. So once we harvest it, take full advantage of those plants, we will get that not completely removed because I do like the idea of having olives, but we're just going to greatly reduce the number that we have and possibly expand our grapes. Because, I mean, it is a winery that we got there. Um, and I just find it hilarious to an extent that I made the winery the focal point of this current playthrough. That wasn't my initial intent. intent. It's just kind of worked out that way. With these fields that we've been redoing and reworking and expanding, um, it has actually been just a coincidence that they are the fields that are closest to that winery to the vineyards so and this thing is pulling this trail this uh planter like it's nothing i keep trying to move the camera around so we don't have to worry about the lag coming from <laughs> the uh olives but it happens I, you know, I wish more people would put like the narrow twins like this available on their tractors. I don't care what brand because all the brands I do like, but for me, I love the look of this. The ones that are a little bit wider, I are, I'm fine with, but I like the look of these over the big like LSW type of tires. I don't know why, even when I look at the tractors in real life, you know, yeah, it is awesome to see those big, massive tires, you know, that make, you know, a big man, you know, six foot two, 300 plus pounds, you know, look tiny. That's not me. I'm like 5'8", like 270. Yeah, I'm decently sized, but not that big. <laughs> And yes, I am trying to lose weight, so don't poke at me too much on that. 
It is a work in progress. It always has been and always will be. Joys of uh, spending three years as a forklift driver not giving a care in the world about what I was doing to myself. Yeah, that was a rough time. We're not going to delve into that. Anyway, so I don't know if I actually finished my point I was trying to make. I apologize. I keep getting sidetracked because, hey, look, a squirrel over there, a shiny ball over that way. Yeah. I'm one of those guys. I do have ADHD. It's just not a severe case from what I've been told. I've tried medications. Uh, medications don't agree with me, so I have taken myself off of those. Definitely did when I was in school because I didn't like the way they made me feel. Um, anyway. Oh, yes. Um, so once we get done plowing all of our new fields, the only thing I plan on doing is if I need to add lime, I will add lime. Um, I'm hoping, I can't promise anything, but I'm hoping to possibly get into cattle on this playthrough. Um, maybe, actually, you know what? Maybe I th we'll do pigs. I keep talking about wanting to do cattle, but I've never really talked about doing anything like pigs or sheep. I think we'll do pigs. And uh, I own the plot of land that's across the street from the vineyard that has, I believe that's a horse barn. So I think what I'll do is, uh, I'm pretty sure I own that land, I'll sell the horse barn and we'll make it into a pig barn. Pig barn with a pasture. If I got one of those mods. I should. But that'll allow me to get manure to be able to spread in our fields. Because I, even though yes, I do tend to use uh, fertilizer and whatnot, especially, you know, since I tend not to get very far before something happens or I just lose track of what I'm doing and I forget where I'm at, so I just restart or I just get bored with what I'm trying to attempt to do. But, I do want to, I do always tend to try to look at more natural routes of taking care of our fields because I think that's the right thing to do and that's what I would do in real life, yes. You know, using fertilizers and, you know, chemically manufactured lime if that's a thing. Yes, that's a high thing to do, but what's it doing to our environment. I'm not an environmental nut by any means. I just kind of try to look at things more so of what's best for me and my family. And if you think about it as a farmer, would you really are you really happy with uh, spreading chemicals over your uh, farm, over your fields that may cause harm? I mean, I'm not trying to second guess. I'm not trying to say that, you know, people that do that are bad farmers by any means. It's just my frame of thought is if I can go natural route, I will. Keep in mind, I can't, I'm not a big fan of the smell of manure by any means, but I still prefer the smell of that over the smell of any kind of chemicals spread in the fields around me. I mean, yeah, I have a pig barn one direction of my house like a mile down the road or two miles and then the other direction is a cattle barn like a mile down the road so yeah there are days where I can't get away with from the smell of it it is what it is but it's my choice for living out in the county so but yeah with these because this I think we're actually gonna keep this set However, I think I'm going to do away with the weight or get a less, you know, lower weight for it. Or I might just get a different front end piece all together. Um, maybe just a better bumper with some lights and such on it for visibility purposes when we're driving down the road. That won't blind people. But... Yeah, the idea is to, where I was going with the whole pig barn thing here on the channel, or on this map, is that 
I want to have a natural resource for being able to put nutrients back into the ground. And because I always tend to focus on doing cattle, I never have really thought about uh, dealing with pigs. And I keep seeing rumors of Farm Sim 25 coming out. One of them, I don't know if it's what Giants is trying to do to us, but I've seen some things and I've heard discussions about it that the color change that they've referenced is in regards to the new farming sim game for computers, or at least for PC. I'll put it that way. Whether or not that's accurate and it's completely different kind of farming sim game for mobile or whatever, that's fine, but with all the other rumors I've heard, it's, that's one that kind of has me questioning things. So, if that's the case and they come out with an announcement about FS25, then the, um, the farms that I currently have going are going to be it for FS22. Unless I find a map that is just outright amazing that someone drops as a precursor to what they're going to do with 25. That'd be the only thing. So. And I know in the past I mentioned a few things that I would love to see Farming Sim and Giants do with the next round. And uh, I would love to hear what you guys would want to see in the next Farming Sim game. I know a lot of people have been doing that kind of content, that kind of chat lately. I'm not quite all about that just yet, but you know, if it comes up in discussion, then yeah, we'll talk about it. I love to talk about it. You know, whatever you guys want to chat about, we'll chat. So. I say, don't go too much farther back. You're going to hit a tree there, dude. You know, one thing I would love to see with course play, aside from it being base game, <laughs> is uh, if you're in the cab, that it doesn't change the character. I would love to see that. Because honestly, course play is just the computer telling you where how to turn and what it, you know, basically laying out the course for you, essentially. It's probably more advanced. It's definitely more advanced than the GPS mod, which I have not gotten into yet. That's just one mod I have not been able to figure out. And that's just me. All right, since we're here at the end, we're going to go through and fill in all the spots that our helper didn't do. No, we're not filling you up. Yes, I realize that I missed a spot back there, but we will come around and get it because that is where we're going to be exiting this field. You can see that because I'm not facing where the uh, olive vineyard is currently at, we're not getting any kind of stutters or anything like that. So but it seems like as we kind of go and face that direction a little bit more, it kind of happens. That's why you're getting sort of like a top view. And that is the autosave. I think it's set for like every 15 minutes. So, depending on how long I record, depends on how many times you guys get to experience it with me. So, there are a few couple spots on this field that I still need to do touch up work. Like that bigger block there. I'm not worried about these guys because that was part of the course play where it just kind of didn't want to enter as a, at a straight line. But this bigger block section here, I think I got to do something about that. Yeah, it's a, like that strip it just didn't want to uh, do anything about. So we're going to come down here, hit this corner real quick because I see a spot that didn't get touched. And we're going to snag that and snag the other corner, and then we're done with this field. I 
Yeah, it might make for some interesting uh, lines and whatnot in the field, but it is what it is. I am not too concerned about it. All right. Did we get it? Yes, we did. Good. That's all about the angle of attack. I think I just need to smooth the field out a little bit right there. So this field does have two different entrances, and that's the way it was. Yeah, that's the way it was originally, because the field, original field, wasn't quite to that entrance. And wasn't quite to that entrance. It was here in between. And about where you see this dotted line floating in there was about where the edge of it was. So that kind of gives you an idea of just how small the field was <laughs> compared to how massive it is now in comparison. I mean, it's not as big as this field over here, which that one we didn't really expand too much, but we expanded it enough. I love the sound of that uh, winding down. Hold on a second. There's the wind-up sound. And then the sound of it spooling down, if you guys didn't catch it. Dang plane. Anyway. We're going to uh, make our way over to the other field that's been currently being cultivated, but I might just kick him out of the field and tell him it's my turn. Because I want to get these fields handled so that way come the beginning of October, uh, we can focus solely on all of harvesting so we can get those out of the ground and ripped out and replaced with grapes. Because the grapes, I don't really seem to have much issue. But the olives, I definitely do. Because we're kind of at the maximum point of the grapes as far as distance goes. And it really, it, there's a little bit, but not much. So, I'm glad I didn't make the entire field grapes or olives for that matter. But, yeah. Anyway, I think we're going to go ahead and end this out. So guys, as always, if you happen to like what you see or catch yourself watching more than one of my videos, please do us both a favor and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. That bell will let you be notified of every single video I post and not just select a few here and there. If you made it this far in the video, guys, I want to say thank you and I greatly appreciate each and every single one of you for joining me along this ride. Yes, this ride of love. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week. And we will see you in the next episodes. Take care. Peace.